a lot of times in our society, we are taught that to think of luxury and to live luxuriously is a sin or is a bad thing or is something that is only something that vain people will want to do and want to be a part of in life. And growing up, I never really knew what it was like to be in a good situation, let's say financially. I was very not well off <laughs> for most of my life up until we were about uh, when I was a young teenager. And then we started as a family starting to get a little bit more better. But we always had food on the table. We always had you know, a roof over our heads. We always had things going on in our lives to help us become better versions of ourselves, even though it wasn't necessarily the best environment. All of our basic needs were generally met. You know, we had some hard times in my family, but for the most part, we, we lived okay. We were okay. And what I want to talk about today is why their vanity, meaning the people that are actually vain, their vanity is going to be severely checked in the upcoming year. I don't know exactly how these things have been pro pro progressing really for you all, but for me, I've seen just within the last couple weeks how people's vanity and their pride is going to be their they're literally writing their own obituary at this point. And what I mean by that is they're so focused on the appearance of things that they're not understanding what it means to have a proper image. They don't understand what it means to have a brand, so to speak. So many people are just, they're not even understanding what energy is, right? And in order to understand what image is, you have to have an understanding of spirituality. You have to have an understanding of discernment. And you have to have an understanding of what God means when he talks about and when the Bible or any other kind of religious text talks about godliness or meekness or blessed are those that have poverty in their spirits, for they will see the kingdom of God. Well, what exactly does this mean? And is it a bad thing for us to live spiritually luxurious? Is it bad for us to live luxuriously? The answer is no. We don't need to... It's not necessarily a bad thing because you have to understand what the difference is between cost and, and, and value. So if you don't understand the difference between the price tag and the value of something, it's going to be very difficult for you to understand what exactly you're trying to do. And this is exactly what the, the van, like the true vain people in the world misunderstand about cost and what they misunderstand about value. A lot of people think that because they wear certain things or certain brands, that automatically makes them something better. And that's not always the case, right? That's not always the case. This goes to show also with religion. People sometimes think that be because they affiliate themselves with a certain religion, that makes them look a certain way even if they're not properly following the context or the discipline of that religion. It's, this is one of the other reasons why I say I follow Christ. I do, not, I do not partake or I do not advocate for people that are uh, saying that they're Christian or saying that they're this or saying that they're that. I'm not religious. I'm ritualistic. And what I mean by that is that I don't need to affiliate myself with any religion in order for me to feel as though I'm making a difference in the world in a positive way. I can do that all on my own between me and God. And this is something that a lot of people do not understand. And this is what a lot of people, they, it's like their sight 
they're blinded by their own sight. <laughs> like they see things and they think that what they see is what is and it's not. It, it, appearance and an image are not the same thing. Okay. Appearance and image are not the same thing. And God doesn't need us to look a certain way in order for him to love us. However, if you are to be of a certain kind of caliber of man or woman, you must look and act a certain way. Otherwise, like you will notice for sure that people will respond to you in different ways and different terms based off of how you carry yourself, number one, and number two, how you act around other people, and number three, just by how you, you wear what you wear. This is actually more important than a lot of people think, right? And so I usually just, I, I'm not too big into fashion. This is not something I've always been into, but I do have an inclination for understanding why it's important and why I viewed luxury as a bad thing for so long. I viewed ambition as a bad thing for so long. I, I viewed ambition and luxury as greed. I did not see it as a means to earn something. I saw it as a means to take something and it was not giving back. And it was up until the last couple years, especially when I just finally started to follow Jesus that I started to understand and realize that as God's elect, we are obligated and we must adhere to the, obviously the laws of God, but also present ourselves in a certain way, in a certain light. And if you even look back on my previous YouTube videos, you'll see that I haven't always been presenting myself in the best ways. Like I'm one of those kinds of people that I don't always need to, like, I'm going to put my best foot forward, but sometimes my best foot that is forward is going to be something that isn't the, the best, <laughs> but I always do try to put my best foot forward. And I want to make sure that I'm treating my life professionally and that there's a new sheriff in town, right? In my life, there's a new sheriff in town and it's me. <laughs> and this is how we all need to think. We all need to take control of our souls again. We all need to take control of our lives and understand that it's okay to be ambitious, especially as men, like women, you don't really need to be ambitious. Like all in all honesty, like you can be if you want, but it's not necessary for men to be attracted to you. What's most important for, for women is their friendliness, their fitness, and just not being with everybody, everybody in the community, really. So when you have those things as a woman, like, and you know how to cook or clean or these other extra things, that's really good as well. But for men, we have to have this kind of ambition. We have to have a sense of direction. We have to create value. And this is where women, I think, misinterpret a lot of the times the kind of guys that they'll pick. And this also means for men, the kind of women that they'll pick. A lot of the times men will pick women based off of their perceived value. But in all honesty, a lot of the women out there, if you were to, <laughs> this sounds, uh, we'll use this, we'll use this metaphor with women first, <laughs> just to save face here. If a woman was to buy a man for his value and then sell it to him for the market, what his actual market value is or his cost would be, do you think it would be different? And now the same thing goes for, for men and women. If a woman was to be picked by a man and if he was to sell her for her cost, not for what he thought that he saw her as her value, would that equate to her value actually in the marketplace? Yes or no? It's difficult to say because it obviously depends on the person and it obviously depends on how you perceive them to be valuable and what actually they're actually capable of. 
Are they, is this person actually competent in these ways or are they not? These are a lot of different things that we have to think about in regard to cost and value, price tag and value. Sometimes the most valuable things cost the least and sometimes the most costly things also disrupt your value. They actually aren't valuable even though they cost you a lot. And anybody that's been heartbroken understands this because you put a value on someone that broke your heart in the end. And so you actually ended up costing more and paying more for something that you thought was worth more, but it actually wasn't. So everybody can relate to that in some sense. And so it's the same thing with our lives in general. But this is one of the reasons why vanity is going to be so important to identify in ourselves and in other people so that we can stay away from those certain kinds of energies. If you, if you, here's the thing, right? There's a difference between being and living luxuriously and being materialistic. There are two different things. Being materialistic is finding fulfillment which actually is false fulfillment and false confidence in the things that we find to be luxurious. Whereas living luxuriously or being luxurious is just about being that elegant, self-confident version of who you are and living as such. That's the, that's the difference right there. That's the real difference between being luxurious and being materialistic. There's nothing wrong with wanting, like if you're a man right now watching this video and you want that car or you want uh, those shoes, I don't, I don't know what you want. <laughs> like usually women want shoes, I suppose, more than men. But I know there are some men that I've met in my past where they were like obsessed with Jordans, man. Like they were obsessed with Jordans. Air Jordans, man, the new Air Jordans came out. It's like, dude, I don't, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I wasn't really a huge fan. I just kind of did my own thing. But they cared about it a lot because they they saw value in it, right? They Their perceived value of these Jordans was way higher than mine. And so for me, it was just like, why would I put a certain amount of price and cost into something and invest in, into something that I don't see as something that is valuable, Right. So value also can be determined individualistically, but it also can be determined socially. And make no mistake, whatever you create, it's going to be valuable in some way, shape, or form. Because if what you create is pleasing to God, then it's bound to be valuable to someone out there. That's one of the reasons why... If you ever start something, you need to continue and continue and continue. It's a marathon. This is a marathon. You know, this is something God's people in themselves understand this. We understand that life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And you might have certain wins in life where you're running up a hill and you're able to beat that person running up the hill, but then on the downhill, well, the other person might be able to catch up to you. And so you've got to just continue with the race and you've got to continue just going where you need to go. You know, this is just part of life is you need to get going, get going and make sure that you understand that there really is, as David Goggins says, there's no finish line. There's no finish line. And this is a lot of the times what vain people do not understand. They think that life is just going to be complete when they get that thing. That's materialisticness. That's not what you want. A, a person that understands the value of something and the person that understands the difference between cost and value and price tag is going to also understand that when you make certain life choices that's going to determine your value 
And it's not necessarily the things that you get. It's, it's the person that you become as you do the things that you're doing. That's what's most important. That's what's going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. You know, in the, in the Bible, it says, and Jesus specifically says this, is that it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into the king, kingdom of heaven. Well, why is that? It's because the rich man seemingly already has everything to himself. Like he already perceives that he's got the value of the world, but that's exactly what it is. It's the value of the world. It's not the value of heavenliness. And this is one of the reasons why people's vanity is going to be checked, not by us necessarily, but by God himself. And make no mistake, like God will judge us all, for sure. I, I've seen, like, Judgment Day is not necessarily always when we die. Judgment Day is when we do the worst things that we know possible to ourselves that decrease our well-being. But also, also, we do it in regard to self-sabotage, knowing that we're self-sabotaging. And then God reveals to us, yeah, you were self-sabotaging and you knew that you were and you knew that you had another choice and you didn't make that other choice. Why? Because you wanted to confirm something about the nature of reality that may or may not be true. And there might be a hint of resent resentment and a hint of bitterness in that. So be careful about that and be watchful of that. And with that being said, grace of Jesus be with us all.